Yeah, obviously we are uh, dealing with a disease which is very complex and has different aspects which need to be addressed. Uh, uh, with uh, EB in general, of course, the wound healing, the fragility of the skin, uh, that poses a, a challenge which needs to be addressed. Uh, then at the same time, the major clinical problem with the considerable uh, morbidity and uh, even uh, early mortality is the cancer issue, which affects uh, certain subtypes of uh, EB, particularly the recessive dystrophic uh, form. And uh, so there is lots of effort being directed to understanding the pathomechanisms of the carcinogenesis, understanding the clinical features uh, and what factors modulate the uh, development of the cancer. So, so those are the, really the um, major areas. We have published the first paper, you know, four years ago, you know, that described seven patients that have been transplanted uh, for severe recessive dystrophic epidermolysis bullosa. And the follow-up paper is coming up this year, and it's going to describe 26 patients, you know, in total, and will show several things. One, uh, that uh, the milder uh, chemotherapy is as effective as the high intensity of chemotherapy we've used before. At the same time, it has less toxic effects, so it is not as harsh on the children with, with EB. And third, we are now seeing the effects of the mesenchymal stromal cells, which are the cells that are not making the blood, but are living in the bone marrow as well. So the, the, the high level you know, 30,000 feet, you know, view of this is bone marrow transplant from all the data that I see, that others have seen, and that I think the community have seen, works. We're hoping that we can learn from this trial, learn about uh, our techniques of grafting, our techniques of culture, how we, how we transfer the gene, how we prepare the patients for this procedure, how we care for them immediately afterwards and in the long term. And uh, you know, we expect we're going to make some mistakes, and we want to be able to learn from the mistakes to be able to optimize this to, to get the best effect possible. So my project is in non-viral gene therapy for RDEB, and I work with a group of chemists to develop a, a system to deliver genes to the patient's skin. Um, and what we're aiming for is a topical application, something that's really, really safe that, that people could just spread on their skin every day and would help build up the proteins that they're missing. Expect, based on our preclinical studies with the mouse model, that losartan will inhibit inf inflammation, will inhibit fibrosis and pseudosyndactyly. So it will reduce fibrosis and uh, prevent digit fusion. Yeah, so I have been asked, I forgot exactly when, I think in November or December, to become part of the, uh, and I hope I say it in the right way, the International uh, Scientific Advisory Board. Uh, I find that a real honor, by the way, so I was really uh, pleasantly surprised, as my own science is, is, is very, very close to, to has, has a lot, let's put it this way, a lot of overlap in, in what the, the disease is about and, and the basic uh, aspects of the disease. Nevertheless, we don't work directly on, uh, on molecules that are involved in EB. So for me, that was a real honor because I respect uh, very much the people that are on the scientific advisory board. And I'm excited to be, uh, I think what helps is perhaps that I have a somewhat outside perspective and that I can bring to the board, maybe, I hope. And uh, that we can, uh, so that's, I think that's m hopefully why they asked me. That, I, that there is something extra that I can bring. And, um, and so I'm excited to be participating to that and also to see what is, uh, what is going on. And therefore this meeting has also been very helpful because you get a very broad spectrum of everything that's going on from, from the basic science to the clinical uh, trials at the moment. So that's very interesting. So we are trying to focus or find new therapy strategies to combat the RDEBSCC because that's the, the um, most important complication and significant complication for the RDEB patients. And my, my background is actually in oncology. I was working in oncology research for the last eight years. Currently we're just working with adult patients, but we hope once we're able to show safety in the adult population that we could start to work with kids, which we really are looking forward to do, doing. And uh, we think that with kids, um, 
it's going to make even a, a bigger impact because uh, they'll be able to um, have their disease corrected at an uh, earlier time point and, and not have to undergo a lot of suffering. What is emerging, and, and this is really the first time that we are talking about, is the quality of life issues, which are so much more day-by-day uh, -day, uh, issues to the families and the patients. Just an example, of course, the uh, intractable itch, uh, which uh, just we haven't paid any attention to that. Um, we had the last meeting uh, three years ago, which was in Marbella. I don't recall those kind of issues being discussed at that time at all. It's all just emerging now, in part because we have much more open communications with the patients and the uh, uh, families and the uh, healthcare providers uh, at the level that allows us to address those issues uh, more in detail from the scientific point of view.